Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wendell Lim, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you here to the 2012 Chauncey Leak Lecture. So I see there are a lot of people in the back, so I just want to remind everyone that there's an overflow room in uh, N114. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let me first say a little bit about uh, Chauncey Leak. Dr. Chauncey Leak was the founder of the Department of Pharmacology at UCSF, which he established in 1928. Uh, Dr. Leak was known for his studies on the actions of anesthetics and narcotics. Uh, but he was also a bit of a polymath among his many pursuits. Uh, he served as the president of the AAAS. Uh, he was into translating Egyptian medical papyri. And he was also a dedicated enologist who served as the research director of the California Wine Advisory Board. As such, in this series, we seek to bring speakers to UCSF who can touch upon aspects of pharmacology and science uh, that relate to our broader society. And so in this spirit, for this year's lecture, we bring together uh, two seemingly different fields, those of science and cooking. So despite their apparent differences, uh, there are many links between these fields. In cooking, one strives to transform matter in a way that is still subject to the laws of chemistry and physics, but to do so in a way that can provide us with sustenance, but also can stimulate our physiological senses in a provocative and even delightful way. Thus, cooking is really a, a truly interdisciplinary science. This is particularly true today uh, when chefs around the world are uh, transforming cooking into a much more precise and scientific art. If you go to the kitchen, any kitchen in a top restaurant around the world, you, you won't be surprised to find many of the pieces of equipment and tools that we use in our labs upstairs, things like immersion baths or rotovaps, which really give chefs a much more control over the flavors and textures of the substrates that, that, work, that they're, they're working with. So in this spirit, we, we have the pleasure of welcome, welcoming two very special guests to UCSF. The first is uh, David Waits, who's a professor of physics and applied physics at Harvard University. So uh, Dave is a, a leader in the field of condensed matter physics. Uh, he uh, is, is a member of the National Academy of Sciences, so world renowned for his work. Uh, he, his work touches many different areas, the study of complex materials, such as colloids, emulsions, and gels, but also of, uh, of living matter, uh, looking at the mechanical properties of cells. Uh, and then he's also uh, been influential in, in, in devel the development of, of innovative microfluidic technologies. In fact, Adam Abate, one of our new faculty members, uh, worked on this as a postdoc in his lab. Now, the reason that we invited Dave here is that um, several years ago, Dave and one of his colleagues at Harvard, Michael Brenner, uh, started a very innovative course at Harvard called Cooking and Science, uh, in which they began to explore this fascinating and unexpected relationship between these two fields, and he'll tell us a little bit about that. Now, our other guest um, is Chef Corey Lee uh, from the restaurant Bennu. So in a city renowned for, for its food, Corey is one of San Francisco's brightest stars. Uh, in 2006, while he was the chef de cuisine at the world-famous French Laundry, Corey received the uh, James Beard Foundation Rising Star Award. And last year, he moved here to San Francisco and opened up his own restaurant, Bennu, uh, which opened up to receive two Michelin stars in its first year. Um, and uh, Bennu, uh, uh, Chef David Chang of Momofuku in New York has, has called Bennu uh, perhaps the best restaurant in America. So Corey is a truly innovative chef who was trained in the French School of Cooking, is inspired by uh, Asian traditions and ingredients, uh, but really incorporates uh, modernist methods in a strong but very balanced way. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a one thanks to uh, my colleague Dan Fletcher from the Department of Bioengineering uh, at UC Berkeley and his lab for doing some of the measurements that we'll show uh, later on in this talk. And so without further ado, here's Dave Weitz. So thank you, Wendell. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and as uh, Wendell said, things are changing rapidly uh, with uh, cooking. I'm learning something about it. I'm just a simple-minded physicist. I know nothing about cooking. I'm trying to learn about it desperately. Uh, and I see all around me these beautiful uh, new dishes. Um, for myself, many of the introduction, or much of the introduction to this, came from meeting this man, Ferran Adria, who uh, ran this restaurant. You can just see this uh, picture of it in the evening, a very, very famous restaurant in Barcelona, uh, where he would serve a variety of uh, really amazing different types of dishes. And we were fortunate to have Ferran visit Harvard uh, several years ago. Uh, and you can see, in fact, if you look carefully, that. Uh, it was uh, in an evening lecture, and it was free. 
Uh, this was my ignorance. We didn't do anything about uh, ticketing or anything like that. And if you think this was crowd, this room was crowded, you should have seen the room two hours before his lecture. We had a room something like this, and we actually had to uh, call the police because there were so many people in the hallways, blocking the hallways, that uh, it was became a fire safety. But we decided after his lecture, clearly he was very popular. We learned a lot. Um, he's doing very interesting things. Um, these are some of the foods that he, uh, some of the dishes that he serves. And I looked at them and I said, well, these are materials that I study as a soft matter physicist. And Ferran is also very interested in uh, the, the relationship between the foods that he makes and science. And so we decided to have a combination of a course and a public lecture series. Uh, that it was primarily a course for non-science majors. So it's a science class. It was based on cooking, but it still is really a science class. And this became um, a very popular class at Harvard. I should remind you that at Harvard, there are only 6,400 students. Um, Michael Brenner, as, as Wendell uh, said, um, was my co as my colleague, and he helped put the course together. And he said, let's open it up as a, a science course for non-science majors. So it was open to really the whole uh, student body of the university. We were fortunate to have a, a real team of uh, contributors, uh, both uh, teaching fellows, students at Harvard, uh, O.J. Compass was uh, one of the people who really was instrumental in uh, setting the course up, and Amy Rowett, who's now a professor at UCLA, was also instrumental in uh, the first year. And uh, it garnered a lot of attention. Uh, there was an article in, in New York Times, and throughout the world there were uh, articles about this. Um, but as I said, there were 6,400 students in Harvard, and this is a movie taken uh, by somebody's cell phone the first day just outside, outside a lecture hall. There's roughly the size of this lecture hall, and there's a space roughly the, uh, the opening there. You don't get crowds like this at Harvard. You really don't get crowds like this at Harvard for a physics class. So here's poor Michael trying to make his way to the class. And this is what it looked like inside. Let's try to, uh, so again, I mean, so I repeat, there are some seats. I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to do in a situation like this. Um, <laughs> but I just point out that there are some seats a little bit further. If some of you could move up, more people will get in. So we use that, you know, this is a science class. We use this, this experience as a way of teaching a little bit of a mathematical review for the non-science majors. So we said, well, look. You know, there were 700 students, more than half, more than 10% of the student body signed up to take this course, and we only could take 300 of them. So the odds of getting into the class were about 43%. Of course, this is not as bad as you think. The odds of getting to Harvard, all of these were Harvard students, <laughs> is only 10%. But the odds, this is a couple of years ago when El Bulli, the restaurant that Ferran ran, was still open. The odds of getting into El Bulli were much lower. <laughs> So getting into the class was actually pretty easy. And so the, uh, the, it had a lot of buzz around the campus, and uh, the uh, Harvard Magazine uh, did a little interview series um, interviewing students who wanted to take the course. Because it's something different, and it's something that's like common, like cooking and stuff like that. It's like something fun, but it's related to something that's usually possibly boring, like physics. <laughs> We had a lab, a real lab. I mean, this is what the lab looked like, you know, thermocouples, cutting boards, shakers, a sink, plates, bowls. We, we were actually very fortunate. We had a, a brand new lab, so it was food safe. We could actually do experiments in the lab. Um, this is some of the experiments. Every, every week we had a recipe of the week. This is a molten cho chocolate cake. This is Jen Aho, one of the uh, TFs, preparing a, a, a recipe in the lab. Um, and the students also like the lab. What are you looking forward to the most? The labs, I think. Um, I think the fact that you can eat your lab is pretty much the first thing. <laughs> so you can eat your lab, you can have a recipe of the week. 
Uh, we had a, a textbook on, on food and cooking by Harold McGee, and we were very fortunate we had Harold also. I can't tell you how amazing it is to be standing here today. I'll try to explain, but uh, it's going to be hard to explain. Uh, I wrote on food and cooking essentially in this building. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, and one of the ways it's changed is uh, the fact that I'm standing here talking to all of you. I never in my wildest dreams thought that uh, Harvard would ever teach a course in the science of cooking to say nothing of my book, the book that I was writing then, being used as the textbook in that course. So this is completely mind-blowing. So it really was, I mean, this was something that we never thought. We had to go back to a book that was written something like 20 years ago to find a textbook that we could use for the course, and this turned out to be a wonderful textbook. Um, we, since it was a new course, we could establish new traditions. This is one of them. These must be equal. It must be the case where motion and sticking are an exact balance. That's our equation of the week. You're all supposed to clap. So we have an equation of the week. And every time you see an equation, you're supposed to clap. You guys, you have to clap. And let me ask you, how often have you seen undergraduate non-science majors clap when you see an equation. <laughs> this is one of the amazing things. <laughs> even science majors. What's even more amazing, even the public, right? Remember, when you see the sign, you have to clap. Uh, we had many other chefs. Bill Yossi's came and joined us. He was a wonderful uh, example. He cooked desserts. Um, he's the pastry chef at the White House. And this is one of his creations. So this is what the course was about. And uh, today, uh, fortunately, as I said, I don't cook. I'm just a physicist. I don't cook. Um, but fortunately, I had people uh, in, the, in the course to help me. And today, we have Corey who's going to help. Corey.